We are here with LA-based band Hell. You guys are touring your first album, and uh, it's my understanding that it was recorded in a place uh, that wasn't with complete dead silence. There was maybe some background sound. Um, is there any reason for that, or was it just happened to be that way? We recorded the smell because it sounds it sounds really cool, and it was the biggest room we could get for the least amount of money, which was free. And it's just it's very difficult. We didn't realize how difficult it would be to record there. There's a gay Vaquero bar next door that bumps reggaeton. It has an incredible bass system. It yeah. starts at one and every there's, day. It, it's there's, there's a lot of things. And there's cars. It's really noisy. It was hard to record, but uh, it's a venue in LA. And there's it's shows every right night. There. So everything that we brought in, yeah, there's photos of it out there. Everything mm -hmm. that we brought in, um, unless we were lucky enough to get like a five day stint where we could record drums and leave everything set up and mic'd, we had to take out because there's shows every night. So mm -hmm. it was not a very efficient place to record. We were really lucky to be able to have this space, but it's not an ideal place to record an album. You guys just got in from Vancouver, right? So how was the show in Vancouver and uh, getting across the border? The show was great, yeah, actually. Yeah, pretty sweet. Um, getting across the border sucks as usual. I fucking, the Canadian border into Vancouver, the Western, beers? the Western Canada border is, I don't know why they're so fucking strict. Like, uh, like Eastern Canada, they, they don't fucking care. But it, we, we've been turned away from Western Canada before. Uh, sort of just a generic question, but how did you guys all form and meet one another and get together in L.A.? Jupiter and I went to college together. That's true story, yeah. He's off camera. <laughs> and for moral support. And then I met John working at Guitar Center. Hollywood. Guitar Center Hollywood. The, uh, I shouldn't have said that. It's, the fun, it's like the, the real deal. Yeah, it's part of the, <laughs> you're part of the music <laughs> business if yeah. you work at Guitar yeah, Center in Hollywood. Yeah, it's not the same as the Guitar Centers you guys have here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and it was miserable, and we both bought a lot of equipment while we worked there, and then we met BJ. Uh, we placed an ad for, um, what was the ad for again? It's Craigslist. Craigslist, we placed an ad for a drummer. And like, he's never going to come. It's, it's, it's not very interesting. It just kind of came together. No yeah, I thought you were going to say I was... No one fucked each other. I was trying to come up with a. I was trying to come up with something cool for the ad, but I couldn't think of anything. So I. Oh, actually, we did find the casual counter. That is yeah. true. So, in terms of your guys' sound, you said you started out <laughs> kind of uh, with a different, the different sound in the beginning. Do you guys have any influences that might particularly have affected your music, or um, you guys just sort of standalone? But is there anybody maybe you'd like to mention that uh, you get your ideas from? Uh, and in the beginning, I, I think now, um, now I don't think we're taking very much direct influence from bands who are really big fans of. But when we were starting and shit, uh, X Models was a really, really big influence. Uh, Animal Collective was big, I think. Um, though not directly, though, but we were, we were really fucking stoked on Animal Collective. Uh, I guess, uh, I think we're pretty much always listening for like the past two years, uh, Chromatics and Glass Candy and anything Italians do better related, like Mirage and whatever the fuck. Uh... Yeah, a lot of blog house, you know, like you go to fucking whatever yeah, blog. Like, and then and then and then there's always like, hey, it's a hot new remix. Like we're always listening to that. Uh, I like that shit a lot. And then uh Crystal Castles of course and Booty Bass, like DJ Salt, DJ Funk. Um uh I think I often download like I'll go to the Power One O Six like playlist and get the top ten. I think Yeah, there's a lot of Nirvana in the car. Has health met Ozzy? John met Kelly Osborne. I met Kelly Osborne. And he was drunk and he talked to her. I gave her a fortune cookie and I was trying to get it going with everyone uh, and her entourage mostly talked to me. She wouldn't talk to me. And then, actually uh, sat down. I did, I did, I did. And then they wanted me to like um, to go out with her Asian friend. That's racist. <laughs> she was racist. She was racist. Um, <laughs> but uh, and then she, she wasn't having it. She wasn't having it. So that didn't work out. Uh, so I sat there for a while. I, try, I tried to try to mingle. And then she's like, they were asking if I was John like, went to Ozfest. I, I did go to Ozfest 2001 <laughs> to see Black Sabbath. That was the fucking worst I show ever. What's that? That uh, robot movie with Tom Selleck in it? You know what I'm talking about, Beach? No. Yeah, Runaway. Runaway. I know that one of your uh, tracks, Triceratops, was remixed by somebody from Montreal, CFCF. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been getting a, like a pretty decent amount of play here on the dance floors in Seattle. And so. I know that. Awesome. Yeah. I had like a, we, we, 
I don't know if that's actually happening. So we're like, we, we, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to outreach. Like we want D-Days to be playing all the fucking yeah, remixes. Yeah, yeah. But I'm stoked the CFCF remix is being played in the club. Um, but no, 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 we really want D-Days to be playing the remixes and that's why I'm the fucking... That was up. ideally the hope, but we, it's hard to keep track of whether, whether or not someone like you who lives in a city tells us that DJs are playing the remixes we've had yeah. done um, or commissioned or whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't really know if it's happening. Mm -hmm. You might know if, if blogs are posting them, and then you would hope that yeah. DJs are gonna play them, but we don't really know. Yeah, we have like an FTP with all the fucking remixes, like because we want DJs to like get all the yeah, tracks. How many, how many remixes are there? Oh, uh, there's a lot. I don't know, yeah, but um, but yeah, we're, we're we're trying to get more people. I don't know. We don't know if it's being played, so we're hoping people are playing the remixes, and we have a fucking FTP you can demand all the shit for all the all the DJs. We're trying to get DJs to play the remixes, but I guess they are. So fuck okay. The way that the first part of the um, the impetus for us starting to have DJs do remixes, or not DJs, but just remixes in general, was us just being really into Crystal Castles. Um, before they sort of kind of got really popular, so John found them on the internet, and then we all started listening to it, and they did some early remixes, and, um, and it just seemed like it would be easily adaptable to their style of music to use something of ours. We didn't really know how it would turn out, and we just sort of on a whim contacted them and asked them to do a remix. And we were just really excited about how good it was and was a lot more palatable than our song. Yeah, and so it was just yeah, so we were just like, kinda, fuck, kinda. free song. So yeah. we were like, well, that'd be an interesting concept of, of uh, if a noise band had a lot of remixes, especially since we were listening to a lot of dance music. Yeah. So it just seemed like a natural thing. We don't want to do what Crazy Town did. Mm -hmm. There's going to be like a sort of, I guess, a remix album or whatever of, of most of the remixes, as many as we can fit on a CD. Probably, yeah. Um, just, just so that, um, wasn't our idea, but so I guess so it would get, um, it could be more of a thing that could get more attention because we really want DJs to be playing the remixes and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And being all the dance floor. And we're really proud of the remixes at all. Yeah, they're really fucking good. And I guess a bunch of them aren't really getting, uh, haven't gotten the noticed terribly. The, I guess with blogs, you know, internet's so content hungry. Mm -hmm. it, you know they're gone quick and people forget about it and we think the remixes are, are really good we don't want them to be sort of I guess forgotten or disposable so if it's on a fucking list if it's on a fucking album or whatever then it can always be on file sharing networks or whatever mm -hmm. we'll always have it yeah they disappear from blogs really fast yeah and so. and tracks from blogs are rarely on uh, most file so sharing networks like and that. DJs don't usually go to shows it's cool to have a remix album and for us it's really rewarding because we don't have to write anything it's not <laughs> painful it's like, you know, they take some elements of our song and we hear it and it's like a completely different creative take on the direction that they would go in it. And then it's like a free song. And, and, you, and it's a way to actually objectively listen to your, uh, an element of your own music without having to be completely, have your perspective, pers uh, perspective skewed and screwed up by the fact that you like wrote the song and then recorded the record. And so it, when we listen to our, our album, it's almost from this sort of... Um, anthropologic like we're like analyzing it but we can listen to the remixes and have fun and but we also want to have other people listen to them and dance to them thanks so this was masha with a uh, health on public access and that's about it so if he says he can't buy you a beer he's full of shit <laughs>